It is and uh, can't do much about it. And on that note, um, seeing there's no one watching, can I just ask you all to make sure your mobiles are on silent or mute? Um, Councillor McLaughlin, will you uh, open the meeting with the acknowledgement of country, please? Okay, hang on, I'll just find it. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I would like to acknowledge the, the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respect to the elders, both past and present. I would also like to extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island Islanders present here today. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin, and I'll read the civic prayer. Almighty God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, we give you thanks for the blessings you bestow upon us in this shire. Grant to those who hold office in this council the spirit of justice and truth, of wisdom and charity, that mindful of our responsibility, we may promote the welfare of your people and advance the common good. Amen. Um, now, just before we start, um, and to those who uh, have just joined the meeting since it's been uploaded, we had technical issues previously, and as such, um, we weren't able to get on Facebook. So the, um, uh, that is why the um, meeting has now been uploaded. To councillors, I'd just like to advise that uh, Mr Ian Reynolds is present in the Natai room at this given time, and uh, as such will be here for the duration of the meeting. And hopefully with the, the business paper the way it is, then um, uh, it won't be extremely long. Uh, now, we don't have any apologies. Everybody's present, yes? Uh, we have the adoption of the previous minutes. Would I ask somebody to move that, that recommendation, please? Move Councillor McLaughlin, second to Councillor Scandrick. Any correction to the minutes? Councillor Turland? You're on mute, Councillor Turland. On page 28, in my motion that was put forward for the second bridge, over the uh, railway line at Windsor Caribbean Street, I had a preamble which wasn't put in the motion for everybody to read. Is there a reason why my preamble was not put in to the motion two weeks ago? Uh, well, we're talking about the correctness and there's no business arising, but I will ask the staff as to the reasoning behind that. Any staff member like to make comment? I'll have to take it on notice, um, Councillor, because I'm not aware of the circumstances. Now, just no preambles. We don't include the preamble in the notice of motions or questions with notice. Okay, the answer back in. Well, we will take it on notice. I'll take it on notice, Councillor. Too. Yeah, yeah. Only to the fact that nobody mentioned anything to me and I signed it at the right time and date, but never had any information back and it was missing from the preamble. Councillor Tell, let me clarify that, please, and I'll come back to you. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other corrections to the minutes, and I put it all in favour, please raise your hand or your card. Uh, Carrie, thank you. Um, declarations of interest. Any council have a declaration of interest? No declaration of interest. There is no mayoral minute. We do not have any public forum. We do not have any visitor item. So we now council has moved to the business paper, page two, 11.1, .1, draft public memorials policy and public memorials policy guidelines. Can we have a mover for that recommendation, please? Move Councillor Turland, secondly Councillor Whipper. Do councillors require any introduction to it? No. No? Okay, is there any uh, uh, councillor scandals? Introduction, please, Mr. Mayor, for the benefit of those who may be uh, watching this delayed broadcast. Okay, uh, then we'll pass this across to Mr. 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 Uh, Manager. Yes. 
Thank you, Mr. Bailey. I believe they run through the chair. Uh, the report, uh, we've got, sorry, we've got a bit of somebody's on, got two, two microphones going. Facebook in the background, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Through the chair, the purpose of the report is to seek approval to adopt the draft uh, public memorials policy and guidelines. Uh, the, the draft policy and guidelines were, were presented to Council on the 10th of June, where it was determined that they'd be placed on public exhibition for a period of 28 days. That was undertaken from the 24th of June to the 27th of July. Um, we had 120 views of the, of the documents, uh, 43 downloads and two submissions during that period. Um, one submission related to the naming of the Cricket Oval and Centennial Park, which was addressed by Council on the 9th of September. Um, the other was in relation to um, actually supporting the, the document and um, had query regarding whether or not public exhibition would be a requirement for renaming of public spaces and places or buildings. Um, that is a requirement within the policy. Um, the policy has been developed in line with the Geographical Names Board's uh, place naming policy. Um, they are the uh, authority for formalising uh, place names within New South Wales. Um, their policy was adopted in uh, July 2019, and this policy um, aligns with that in a, as a best practice approach. Okay, any uh, council development question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Lua. With regard to, uh, I, see, I see some of the comments from the public where uh, I'm, I'm sure council staff have taken on board. One of them that I remember basically is that uh, you, you had to be associated with something for 20 years. I mean, that's not, um, um, you know, I'm hoping that there's some um, latitude with regard to that so that uh, possibly you know, that can be, if someone is involved very much in some, you know, around something that basically, you know, there's some some leniency on, on that sort of um, um, take with regard to uh, the public. Uh, Mr. Lula, then Councillor Turbin. Yeah, through the minute. Um, yeah, the uh, guidelines uh, do dictate that they need to have a long affiliation with the flag. So, yes. Uh, in terms of the naming request, if it relates to a place or a public reserve, then they need to have a, a long-term affiliation with the place or within the shire. Um, that is in line with the uh, geographical names board guidelines, and the 20 years is considered a uh, long-term affiliation. I appreciate that, but if someone was there for 19 and a half years, we wouldn't knock them out because they didn't quite make the, um, the 20 years. That's all I'm saying. There should be some latitude, I think. Common sense will provide our council. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good. Council I'm on mute. I brought this up before when we put this forward is that the Lynch family were the ones that donated the land at Centennial Park. Would I just ask the staff, maybe they should bring back a report on possibly changing the name to the, the Lynch Park instead of Centennial Park? Or do you want me to bring a notice of motion? I'd rather the staff do some work on it first. Uh, I think there is a geographical name of it, Councillor Turner, who would require a notice of motion, I believe. But uh, staff would like to comment. Uh, Mr. Mayor, look, Councillor Turner, I'm happy for the staff to look into it a little bit more. And perhaps we can um, fire either a circular or an information session, have a bit of a conversation about what we find, and then maybe where we go from there. Okay, yeah, because there's some uh, people in the historical side of it have a lot of information in relation to that. Um, as we know, Councillor McLaughlin, we know the person who has lots of information about it. Thank okay. you, thank you. Well, I'll give the undertaking to staff, we'll do a little bit more research and we'll have a conversation with you about where to from there. Yeah, Rodney Cavalier has a lot of information in relation to okay. that paddock. Anyway, I'll leave it to you guys. Okay, are there any more questions? Uh, if there's no debate, then I'll put the recommendation. All in favour, please raise your card or whatever. Uh, that is carried unanimously. We now move on to page 18, 11.2. Proposed Houses Agreement to Country Women's Association of New South Wales, Green Park, Winston, West Fittigoff. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor McLaughlin and Andrews. Is there any discussion to it? No. Uh, 
Put the recommendation all in favour, please say aye, raise your card, carried unanimously. Page 22, 11.3, proposed licence agreement with Bullwell Limited Park Water Reserve, Australia Avenue, New Berrima. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Nelson, second to Councillor Andrews. Is there any questions to it? Then I'll put the recommendation. Councillor Gary, Councillor Tillman had his card up. Councillor Tillman. Yeah, so this is uh, just a, a bit of a briefing on what it actually means. I've read the report, but maybe we should just have a, a five second briefing on it if we can. Okay, I'll hand it over to Mr. Mooney. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, councillors, this report is a continuation of an existing licence agreement with Borrell. Um, Borrell has a requirement under the um, Protection of the Environment Operations Act um, and the Clean Air Act and to ensure that they monitor um, dust um, from the um, plant down there at New Berrima. Um, the location of the dust monitors um, have required them to locate, um, to place them on, on land that isn't under their ownership. Um, as such, they are seeking a continuation of the license of council land and if memory serves me correct, it's a very, very small parcel of land, somewhere in a, less than a couple of square metres, so they can place that um, yeah, and on the water reservoir to place that equipment on, on the land. Good. Any questions? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could I ask through you, when will those monitoring reports come back to Council or will they come through the Boral Consultative Committee? Okay, I'll pass it to staff. Well, look, the, the simple answer is council standard is that's got no relevance to this report. This is a property matter where we're um, offering a lease for that monitoring equipment to sit on the water reservoir. I can't answer your question. That's that's not really the terms of this report. Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Paul. It's been a long-standing issue. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Rob, it goes to the EPA. It goes to the EPA. That's where it goes. I would think you're licensing agreement. Not with their license We are looking at a licensing agreement. All in favour of the uh, the recommendation carried unanimously. We now move to um, page 26, the investment report 11.4. Somebody move it, Councillor Nelson, seconder, Councillor Turlin. Is there any questions to the investment report? No, nope. then I'll put it. All in favour, please raise your card. Carry you unanimously. We'll move across to expressions of interest, Barrel Memorial Hall refurbishment. Uh, councillors, would uh, somebody like to move the recommendation? Please, then I'll take questions. Councillor Andrews and McLaughlin. Questions then come from Councillor Turlin, um, Councillor Halstead, I think, and Councillor Whipper. Can, so, I, can, can I just ask a question? Can I ask a question first in relation to the procedure so I've got it clear in my mind? We are now going to move the recommendations or motion or uh, amendments before we actually have a briefing and also questions. Last week, we, or two weeks ago, it was around the other way. I just want to know what is going to be the platform from here on. Uh, okay, you weren't at the briefing this afternoon, Councillor Tellman, but I'll pass it across to uh, Acting General Manager, Mr Paul. Uh, well, Councillor Tillon, it was discussed and I guess put forward by the Mayor this afternoon that to have some, I guess, equity in terms of councillors being able to move and second the motion, that he's proposing going forward to ask the councillors to put a motion and move and second it prior to an introduction and or questions, so that um, I guess councillors don't have the opportunity through a question or whatever to try and move the motion without... I guess a fair crack for everybody. So that's that's what was discussed this afternoon and agreed. So that's that's the format going forward. No, that's fine. You explained the system to me. My question now, if I may, am I now that's been resolved? Yes, yes. Continue, Councillor Turner. On page thirty-four, 
Okay, hang on. I've got you, Councillor Stanford, Councillor Turman. On page 34, <coughs> there is only two locals. Three. Um, and I believe none of those are actually in our list to actually be part of. Or well, one is. Sorry, no, one is. There's one local. Okay, yeah. it's got to go to closed council. It's just a shame there's only three locals out of the whole. Oh, no. <coughs> it is, but we are uh, suggesting that um, we go into either closed council or you... Sorry, we have a clarification, Mr Moon. Uh, just a point of clarification there through you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, we are not requesting or seeking that this report go to closed committee. Um, the reason for that being, um, at this stage, an expression of interest is being conducted and there has been no pricing evaluation um, undertaken as part of that expression of interest. Um, the recommendation in front of you, councillors, recommends that we essentially um, select five experienced um, contractors to progress to the next stage, which is a selective request for tender. The selective request for tender will include both non-pricing and pricing criteria, and an assessment will be made as part of that assessment, or a, a, a recommendation will be made as part of that assessment. Is it, is it really a hard project? So that's why they selected these guys that do um, sound insulation or seating or what's what's the specialty of well, this work? I can't hear you, sorry. No, he hasn't spoken yet. Okay, councillors, through the chair, um, the Barrel Memorial Hall project does have a lot of niche and boutique um, elements to it. Uh, we have engaged or, or tried to seek the expertise of specialist contractors to undertake that sort of work. Um, and as you can see, there's been an exceptional amount of interest for the project. And our critical evaluation of their submissions has led to the following proposed um, as they've demonstrated their experience and capability in this field. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scammon, then Councillor Halstead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Could staff um, just reconfirm paragraph uh, two at the bottom of page 32 <laughs> that the Memorial Hall is to focus on music as a music centre of excellence. That's its, it's to be tuned for music and uh, also it's, it's quite clearly covered there. Can we just restate that, please? Well, I think it is, uh, it is written fairly categorically <laughs> and I don't know what else... Council staff can say, but I'll pass it over to Mr. Mooney. No, Mr. Paul, Mr. Mr. Paul. Council Standard, we have um, stuck to the council brief in terms of the primary purpose for the Bower Memorial Hall, and that is for unamplified music. The tender that went out for the design work, the specialist consultants who are employed by the architect have all focused on that particular issue, and that's what we're delivering. Thank you, Mr. Paul. And the grant was received on that basis, and the capacity is to be increased uh, to 350, I note. Uh, well, the grant was received on the basis of the project's merit, not necessarily on the basis of an unamplified music. I mean, that may well have been part of what was proposed. Um, so I'll just clarify that. In terms of the actual numbers, I don't have that number in front of me. Page, page 32, Mr. Paul. Is that the right total capacity of 350? Now that includes members of the orchestra, etc., as well. Yes. It's, it's great. There's an extra uh, probably 50 seats that uh, that will result in. Could That's correct. Right. We're going from approximately 300 to 350. Indeed, it could be quite significant for those uh, not for profits. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halstead, then Councillor McLaughlin. Well, it's pretty straightforward, Mr. Mayor. This is a process that's been followed totally in accordance with the local government regulation, part dealing with tenders. Uh, obviously, they've uh, sought expressions of interest and now they've <laughs> sorted through them and uh, decided which ones have the capacity to do the work. I mean, to me, there's no need for this uh, comprehensive dialogue on something that, quite frank, is already written in the report. I find it extraordinary that this sort of detailed questioning comes down when it's all in front of them. I just wonder how many people have actually read what's in front of them. 
And this is totally appropriate and it could be carried. If there's no motion, if there's no mover and second, I certainly want to move it. It's been moved and seconded, Andrews and Who by? Andrews and McLaughlin. Uh, okay. Councillor McLaughlin. You're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, with regard to uh, the ancillary use of the hall, primarily, uh, I, I believe that's right. It is for un unamplified music, but there's nothing to say it can't be used for thespians, uh, travelling shows and all that, uh, that, that as well. Uh, I'm just wondering um, if Mr. Paul can spell, spell out for, um, for us and, uh, and the community just how much we got in the grant. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I think it was 2.85 million. It was over 2 million, but I can't remember. I don't have a figure in front of me, Council. Oh, that, that, that gives an idea. Thank you. That's good to know. Great. $805,423. And the project cost, the full cost, will be? Well, we have that's why we're what's here before you to get the tender to find out. That's about 6. Okay. <laughs> Very good. About 6.5 million, Council. Okay. Great. Okay, but we won't know until they come back in. But Mr. Paul made the comment today <coughs> at the briefing session that if we, if this is delayed, the time frame for the expenditure of the funds may be very difficult to meet, and we do not want to have the, have uh, any hold up in relation to that. So. I'll be looking, uh, unless there's any debate, Councillor Whipper. Uh, Mr Mayor, just a question. I did um, raise that um, previously. As um, I indicated in the uh, information session today, I was approached by a member of the Southern Highlands Concert Orchestra who um, still expressed some concerns around um, um, the, the needs of the orchestra and the band. My question is, um, do we feel confident that, um, that we have engaged with both those um, um, users and that, uh, that we can achieve the, um, the expectations that they've raised? Good question, Councillor Whipper, and I'll pass that to the board. Look, Councillor, yeah. back to your question. Um, I'm satisfied that we've had comprehensive engagement with uh, representatives of the, of the orchestra. Um, we've had a number of information sessions where both councillors and uh, specialist consultants um, engage with a number of members of, of the orchestra. Um, would I say that they're 100% happy? Um, no, I can't say that. But at the end of the day, I think we've got the, the best possible outcome that we can achieve. Thank you. All right, if there's no further questions and no debate, then I'll put the recommendation all in favour. And that is carried unanimously. Well done, thank you. 12.1, page 38, planning proposal for Darabee Lodge, Broughton Street, Moss Vale. Now, uh, Councillor Whipper has indicated that there's a day that he was sending in an amendment to the recommendation. So, but I've got to ask initially whether somebody is moving the recommendation. Not the recommendation, Mr. Mayor, but I'm happy to move a recommendation. Somebody to move the recommendation as printed. Councillor Andrews, seconded. Councillor Gotham. Yeah, for deb debate, I'll second it. Yep, before debate. Yep. Now, Councillor Whipper, you have foreshadowed an amendment. Can, have. We, uh, can we put that amendment up on the screen, please? Thank you. So, to see if you've got a seconder. It'll be a direct negative. Uh, so, I've just been advised it's going to be a direct negative. So, it will have to be a uh, motion arising, Councillor Whipper. Motion. 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 So, just, a, just a point of clarification, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, um, given that I never had the opportunity to move that amendment as a motion, uh, yeah, it doesn't, necessar doesn't necessarily mean that because a motion's written on the business papers that we have to move that motion. 
Um, I'm just wondering why I wasn't given the opportunity to move that as a motion and to see whether there was a seconder. I called, I called for a move of the motion and um, that probably yeah. would have been the time to oppose, but it's still on the books, Councillor Whipper. As long as councillors can see that recommendation so they know what, um, what I've flagged, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I think, I think Councillor Whipper is correct because he moved the question first about the motion. No, His no, foreshadow, no. which should have been the motion. No, Councillor, Councillor Turlin, I asked for somebody to move. I said I had received an amendment to the motion uh, that was being put and I asked for somebody if they were willing to move the motion and that was moved and seconded. Council Whipper yeah. has put... So up again, Mr Mayor, yeah. just when... Yeah. You could swap them around. Again, Mr Mayor, just a point of clarification. When, when I did send that in, I did um, uh, refer to it as either a motion or a, an amendment. I did so because um, obviously if I would have been able to put that as a motion, it would have been a motion. But look, I'm happy for the debate to go forward. Um, I won't create any waves. I'm just um, following process there, that's all. Well, I take your point. Uh, the, I have ruled from the chair and the motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, Councillor, uh, and I take your point, Councillor Whipper. Councillor Andrew, um, uh, Councillor Nelson. Question. Yes, question, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm hoping, number one, that we get an introduction, and yeah. number two, I'm seeking clarification on the area that we're um, in principal support. Is it the red dotted line around on, which is on page 49, or is it the total area of the proposed development on page 49? Uh, I'll take that. I think, Councillor Nelson, um, in relation to this, it needs an introduction. I'll ask Mr uh, Park to, um, to introduce it and answer that question within that... Uh, within that uh, thank, thank you. And then Councillor Turland after that. Mr Park. Thank you. And, and through the Chair, Councillors, this report relates to a planned proposal to rezone land at Broughton Street in Mossvale, uh, known as Darby Lodge. The site has a fairly long background dating back to around 2007 when the landowners made a request to be rezoned as part of the 2010 New Jacarabi LEP. Um, the site was adopted, or a portion of the site was adopted by Council in the 2015 Local Planning Strategy. Um, we subsequently received a planning proposal to rezone the entire site that was reported to Council and not supported at the time. Um, the proponent reviewed that decision under the old pre-gateway review system, where the JRPP did not support the rezoning of the entire site. Um, they made some commentary around the type of assessment that should be done over the site, and that included visual impact on the adjoining heritage items, um, obviously the EEC that exists on the site, as well as the riparian area that was on the site. Um, part of preparing the local housing strategy, we reviewed um, the JRP recommendations. We undertook that assessment that was recommended by the panel. Uh, and it came up with an increased developable area based on that analysis. So that analysis looked at the visual impact, it looked at the riparian area on the site, and it avoided all of the areas that contained EEC. So that position was adopted by Council in June of this year. Um, in going through that process, councillors, we briefed you a number of times on this site specifically, as well as the other new living areas identified in the housing strategy. And that position was ultimately adopted by Council in 2016. And I'll just, I uh, guess, flag that we're currently back on exhibition with the local housing strategy with this site shown as one of the new living areas. Uh, we have now received a, an additional plan proposal. The line is relatively similar to the, the line adopted in the housing strategy. Um, there are some minor tweaks that we were considering this plan proposal now. We would recommend some minor changes. Uh, but as we have become increasingly aware over the last 12 months, there's very limited capacity in our sewage treatment plants. 
uh, one of the key tests to support a planning proposal is, is there sufficient public infrastructure to support the development of this site? In this case, we know the answer to that question for the time being is no, until we've upgraded the Mostar series treatment plan. So the recommendation before you is to give in principle support to a rezoning on the land, not the whole site, but a portion of the site. Um, and, uh, sorry, in principle support for the report then to come back to council if and when the Mossar Series Treatment Plan is upgraded. And at that point, we would make recommendations on the exact development area and the proposed lot sizes. So we haven't specified a line as such as part of this report. We just recommended to give in principle support consistent with the housing strategy. And if and when there is capacity in the Series Treatment Plan, it will be brought back before council to make a detailed decision on this on this team program. All right, so we have uh, a question in relation to that from Councillor uh, Nelson and then Councillor Scanlon and Councillor McLaughlin. So your question, Councillor Nelson, are you happy with the answer? <coughs> You're on mute. Yes, I'm okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scanlon and Councillor Nelson. Uh, at the uh, briefing, Mr. Mayor, I asked for a uh, overhead uh, satellite photo of the current development to be put up. Have we got that prepared? And could then Mr. Park uh, address that photo, please? Uh, well, I'll ask whether that was possible to get that up in the time. Have we? Do yeah, we're just getting. We're getting it up. So I'll go to Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Park. Um, in June, we, you're saying the council supported this uh, planning proposal. My other question is, uh, in principle support at a later date, can that be overturned by uh, a, a council later on, or does that mean it stays um, in situ at that size? Look, councillors, and through the chair, we have a planning proposal in front of us, and we are obliged to consider the planning proposal in front of us. Um, at this stage, it can't be supported because we know there's insufficient capacity in the under restriction. Yep, I understand that. Yep. So what we are suggesting is that there we, give, we don't want to say to someone who we've just adopted this site in the local housing strategy, we don't want to turn around and say, no, we're not going to rezone you. Uh, we're saying, yes, we still have in principle support consistent with what we've just adopted in the housing strategy. Yes. But we can't rezone now. We'll come back and we'll define what that thing was when it comes back before a council, a future council. Um, so it could be downsized? It could be whatever the council of the day decides at that time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That answers my question. Okay, uh, council, uh, uh, Councillor Scandrick, there's, a, there's the map up there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If, if um, Mr. Park could now just take us through those uh, lines there and uh, cover the issue that uh, has been raised with uh, Councillor Whipper, um, pointing out that the uh, current state of the development is as you see it on the screen. Thank you. Thank you. And then it'll be Councillor Halstead and then Councillor Whipper. Uh, Councillor uh, Andrews was it first. Yes. Can, um, Mr Park. Thank you. And through the chair, councillors, apologies for the quality of the map. I quickly pulled it together in between the briefing session and now. Uh, but what you can see, the red outline is the, the, is the subject land. Uh, the line shown in black is approximately the area that was identified through the local planning strategy in 2015 and adopted by council at the time. Uh, that is the Plan pro sorry, that's the line that was essentially challenged through to the JRPP and the pre-gateway review. That recommendation, the re sorry, the recommendation of the JRPP was not to rezone the whole site, but it gave a series of criteria to consider in any future rezoning of the site. And it looked at the visual impact from the adjoining heritage items to the west of the site, um, not really <coughs> county, but, but west of the site. It considered the EEC, which you can see on the western portion of the site, shown in the green outline, is the is the EEC that contained the site. And there is a ripe area in the area. It doesn't show very well on the aerial photo, but it runs north, south through the site, immediately east of that EEC. And you can see a dam in the middle of the site near the Purple Square, which is where the ripe area in the area runs through the site. So as part of the local housing strategy, we undertook that analysis and it's all outlined in the local housing strategy. We looked at the visual impact 
both from the highway as well as from the heritage items. Um, one of the good things about this site is it's got the reservoir immediately west, which is on a massive hill, so you can hardly see the site from the heritage items or from, um, or from the highway. And we also looked at the mature vegetation on the site, the area you see in the riparian area, and came up with a new line and a set of design principles, which included uh, protecting the mature vegetation on the site, as well as some other design principles to work with the topography of the land. Um, and it came up with that blue line, roughly. Again, this is a fairly crude representation of what's in the housing strategy. With a planning proposal that we've got in front of us, is roughly, and very roughly, because I just drew it from looking at their plan, is roughly about where that purple line is shown. So there is some inconsistency, and I've had discussions with the proponent about even when it goes before council formally, it would have to come back inside of that last row of mature vegetation where the blue line is. Okay, so are you happy with that? Happy with that response, Council of Goffman? Uh, Councillor Skin, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. But uh, one question is that uh, the black line, which was the original LPS area, uh, is that something that uh, can be revisited, Mr. Park? Um, Councillor, uh, Mr. Park, looking through the chair, ultimately, Councillors, it's up for you uh, to make decisions on these sorts of matters. We have recently adopted the blue line in the local housing strategy, which supersedes the local planning strategy. But if and when a planning proposal comes before council, they can make any decision that they see fit on that planning proposal. Thank you. Uh, next council is Council Andrews, I think, and then Councillor Whipper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've just trying to make this simplistic. Um, Mr. Park, am I right? In Stating that to the right, now that maps up there, to the right of the blue line is what we're seeking through the recommendation to support in principle. Am I correct tonight? Uh, yeah, through Mr. Park, Clara Pollock. Thank you, and through the chair. Look, we've deliberately not been definitive about what we what the eventual rezoning would. We are saying we are giving in principle support to a rezoning consistent with the housing strategy, which is that yes. blue line. Um, yeah. At a later date, the exact one will be determined when it comes before council with a more detailed report on all of the site constraints and analysis. Thank you, uh, Councillor Whipper, then Councillor Halstead, and then Councillor Turley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so previously, Mr. Park, there was a statement made that um, if we um, give in principle support tonight. Um, that um, that can be overturned. Um, my question is, alternatively, if we don't give in principle support tonight, the applicant is certainly um, uh, um, can bring that back at a future date when all these problems are sorted out. Is that correct? Mr. Park. Thank you, through the chair. Um, look, yes, so if, if we don't give in principle support tonight, there will be two options available to the proponent and the landowner. One is what's called now a rezoning review, where they can ultimately take the decision of council tonight to the JRPP or the Southern Regional Planning Panel for them to review council's decision. Um, the alternate option is them to then come back in three or four years' time when the sewage treatment plant's upgraded and lodge whatever they see fit at the time over the site. Um, Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Halstead, and then Councillor. Yeah, look, I'm just wondering why the recommendation would be or wouldn't be different to what's written there. I'm uh, very concerned about the uh, state of anything that says in principle, um, and I'll put in a form of a question. The town planning staff would be aware, would they not, that uh, in the Land and Environment Court, there's been many decisions which uh, and discussion around giving in principle approvals, very dangerous. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. But in question then to you, Mr. Mayor, when do you intend putting Larry Whipper's amendment or whatever you want to call it up? Because I would hate to see this dealt with as it is now. And then you tell me, oh, well, you know, that's it, it's been carried or whatever else. And then Larry's left in the lurch. What's the story? If the motion is carried, then Councillor Whipper's amendment cannot get up because it's a direct negative. If the motion as printed is defeated, then Councillor Whipper's motion will come forward as, as a motion. 
Not as an amendment, but as a motion. I'm happy that we know what the procedure is because otherwise uh, people will be left in the dark. <laughs> I know what I'll be doing now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Turlin. The, uh, the infrastructure requirements in relation to roads and sewer and water, what would it not be wise to introduce them now in relation to any other works that need to be done? In other words, if we don't take into account the sewer system upgrade to take this and other sites that's been proposed under the housing strategy, we would be remiss, would we not? So in other words, what capacity extra, extra capacity, is being designed into all the infrastructure issues, roads, traffic, sewer, water, to our housing strategy in Moss Vale now? Uh, yep, fair question. Uh, I don't know whether Mr Paul or Mr Pepping well, or Mr well, Park... Can I, can I might chip in the <laughs> OK, but firstly, Mr Park will make comment and then Mr Paul. Thank you, through the Chair. It's a good question and one of the really important things about things like local housing strategies where you plan and identify how the shire is going to grow is it means you can make informed decisions when you're doing major infrastructure works such as upgrading the sewage treatment plant. So our assets team are fully across what has been identified through the local housing strategy and can make informed planning decisions uh, based on that information. Okay. Uh, now we, if there's no more questions, we are now in debate. Somebody like to make some comment in relation to the issue? Councillor Halstead, then Councillor Andrews. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll certainly be voting against the recommendation. And the reasons are that we have a local housing strategy in play at the moment, which is with the Department of Planning and that will be processed in due course. I'm just wondering why we have another case of a private developer trying to, again, jump the gun, because that's what this is, no matter how you look at it. Uh, the whole idea of uh, the, the local housing strategy, uh, together with other, uh, if you like, investigations that were carried on prior to that, was to get the whole process in an organised fashion that then will be dealt with uh, all on the same basis, uh, albeit that uh, a lot of suggestions made in it would be coming from the staff and obviously then endorsed by the council. Um, so I'm, I'm strongly opposed to this, this motion as it currently stands. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halford. Councillor Andrews, then Councillor McLaughlin, and then Councillor Scandrick, and Thank then Councillor Whipper. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, it's very simple why I, I support this and propose the, the recommendation. Um, yeah, I'm counselling that may be right with the danger of supporting something in principle. I'm not so sure, but he may well be right. But mainly it's because that, you know, we identified this parcel of land and supported it for rezoning earlier this year. So I'll be continuing to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Scandrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, what worries me particularly with this is the capacity of our sewerage system, as we've heard uh, also on Chelsea Kamanji. Um, I'm sorry, was I poured in before you, Councillor Turland? I'm not sure. No, Councillor Turland, he's he right, and I've got Councillor Turland after uh, Councillor Whipper. Thank you. Uh, so, um, this is again part of the uh, issue with upgrading our STP plants whether it's for Chelsea or for this, our roads, uh, the capacity of those and the general cost to the community. So this, this one does concern me. I think things have changed a bit since we uh, looked at the local housing strategy in June. I think that's why Councillor Whipp has um, raised this. Uh, I do want to say I do think he did raise this correctly, Mr Mayor, and should have been heard. Still, I guess we can all work on this. Councillor Whipp. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, look, I'm voting against the recommendation. I have grave concerns about supporting things in principle. My experience has been that once you give in principle support, you set up an expectation uh, for the developer and it is a approval as far as I'm concerned. Um, I look at the report and I see that the JRPP have um, raised considerable concerns uh, about this proposal. 
and not the least of those is the impacts on the um, endangered ecological community. I mean, our E3 zones were put in, put in place for specific purposes. That was for, to protect our environment um, and our, our landscapes. My concern is that incrementally we're losing that. Little by little, um, our endangered ecological communities are being compromised. Once you start to disturb those communities, they don't grow back. You just can't replace them. It takes, in some instances, hundreds of years for those communities to develop. I think um, we need to pull back and um, give this time to go through yeah. a process. To give that approval now, or even in principle approval, I think flies in the face of everything we've tried to achieve through our E3 zoning. Councillor Halstead will know how, how unique this is, our E3 zoning, and how it was put in place for specific purposes. Um, and then we have the added impost on our sewerage system. That's, that's no small thing. Um, since this was put forward, we have Chelsea Kamanji on, on the books now. Um, so to, to make claims that this will add to our housing stock, I, look, I, I think it's a bit premature. And I'm asking councillors just to um, uh, use a little bit of discretion in relation to this and the precautionary principle. We just can't rush into this and give this, um, this um, in principle support or tacit approval. Uh, at this stage, I think we need to take this seriously. And um, as I said, um, the the um, the developer can come back anyway and put that on the table, and we can assess it at a further stage. But to give uh, in principle approval now, I think is very dangerous, councillors. Thank you, councillor Whipper, councillor Turley. Yeah, look, may I suggest something here, and we'll see where it goes. Is that it's, it basically becomes a foreshadow as well after the foreshadow, the council not. Uh, not provide an in-principle uh, approval until the planning department introduces the housing strategy. Introducing approves something of those lines, only because are we uh, moving too far forward? Okay, I'll leave it there on the table, Councillor Turlin, if that's your sort of indication what you want to try and move. It can't be seconded, it can't, nothing can be... We've got to debate this, depending on whether it's approved or not. Then Councillor Wimmers will come forward and then you can then put your foreshadowed motion at, or it will be an amendment at that stage. Yep. So uh, uh, who hasn't spoken? Councillor Nelson? Counsel Mr Mayor. Yes, I've got Councillor Nelson's got his card up. And then, and then you have you Say, spoken, Councillor McLaughlin? Have you? I haven't spoken. No. Okay, Councillor Nelson and Councillor McLaughlin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, from what I understand, I, I thought we recently considered this in the local housing yeah. strategy. Exactly. Um, not the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but uh, no. anyway, the uh, to my mind, uh, uh, I've understood what. Uh, what Mr. Park has said, so uh, that's okay. The JRPP raised the concerns to cut the and and then resolved to cut the proposal back to save the sensitive land. And uh, yeah, we did have an inspection on this, and uh, and the area will have to wait until the sewage system is upgraded, and that's going to take years. Uh, this is get, just giving some sort of certainty uh, to the landowner and to uh, the planning staff uh, so that uh, council can forward plan. So um, I, I, uh, I haven't really got a problem with it. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. You've read the report correctly. Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, my understanding is, is similar to uh, Councillor Nelson in that, that um, this is part of our uh, local uh, housing strategy. Um, and um, th this is something that we looked at in June. Um, and it sounds like our strategic planners have looked at this after the JRP has looked at it. And obviously they've had some concerns and so has 
council staff, and that's why the whole site has not been approved. Um, uh, the landowner, if this is not approved tonight, is, as we heard from Mr Park, has got some options. They can have it reviewed. They can take it back to the JRPP. Um, look, it's only an in-principle support. And given that this will be two or three years down the track, um, you know, a future council will have a close look at it. It's not set in stone, councillors. I, I hear what um, um, councillors are saying and um, Councillor Whipper makes some good points there. And I'm, uh, I could go either way on this, but I, I think seeing that our, our strategic planners have placed this in as a in principle, and I know, you know, we don't like to do in principle, but um, I think it does not mean that um, the whole lot will be used. I mean, given the situation under COVID, uh, the possibilities of our, our population not, and our increase in our local population in our shire may not require yeah. this, it could very easily change in the next few years. So, um, look, I, I'm tempted to support uh, this motion, but I do hear Councillor Whipper saying they can come back and have another bite at the cherry in three or four years. So, um, but I think to give a bit of certainty to our council staff and our strategic planners that think that this um, does um, does work as an in principle um, uh, approval, I think I'd be happy to support, and I haven't got any great problems with it. Thank you. Now, before it goes back to uh, the right of reply to Councillor Andrews, I'll make a comment. Uh, this has been looked at since 2004. We've inspected the site on numerous occasions, mm -hmm. and we all agree it was carried unanimously on the, June, on, uh, the 24th of June by all councillors that we endorse the living area three Mossvale West um, be, have, be retained in the local housing strategy. So we looked at it in June as a council. It was moved and seconded by the uh, by councils who are now objecting to it. And as I say, we we really queried this one because, as Mr. Park pointed out. Council was concerned that it'd be running up the hill, taking in what Council of Whipper has raised, the ecological endangered area, and it would spill over the past the water tower and would be viewable from the highway, from Sutton Forest. And councillors didn't want that. And I would I won't support that either. But we, we, as I say, there has been a monumental shift because it was universally and completely endorsed by councillors. So I can't see, and we looked at that ecological endangered area, and that was the reason we didn't allow it to be included in the uh, extension. So I will be supporting the recommendation I will support you, Councillor Whipper, that if this were to come back to Council for another bite of the cherry, then I won't be supporting it because I agree with you that the retention of that endangered species uh, area up there be protected. But this is not taking in that area. It is an area that we agreed on as a universally as a councillor. Uh, Councillor Andrews, Councillor Turlin, I. Have you, you want to speak? Have you spoken? Can I ask a question to Mr Park, please? Um, well, you can't now. We are really in the... It's a, it, it's a critical question. It's a simple one, it's but I think it's going to clarify some of the thoughts of the council. Clarification. It must be a clarification. A clarification, yep. My, my question for clarification is... If the Minister or the Department of Planning has not endorsed our housing strategy, and if they refuse this development for whatever reason or any other development on our, our proposal, this uh, motion cannot be brought forward. Aren't we before the court? We're, we're too far forward until the Minister has approved our planning strategy. 
Okay, that that really is a question as opposed to I'll ask Mr. Pepe to answer this. Councillors, you might recall on the 24th of June, there was two documents that were considered by Council, the local strategic planning statement and the yes. local housing strategy. The yes. local strategic planning statement does not require any endorsement of the Department of Planning. It merely requires an adoption of Council and is uploaded onto the Department's website, which was done. The housing strategy um, reflects what the local strategic planning statement um, contained. That was submitted to the Department of Planning. We haven't heard formally from the Department of Planning yes. as to whether or not there's any concerns with that. So we're assuming that what has been submitted to this point in time is okay. And that then enables uh, property owners that were reflected in the housing strategy to come forward with their development proposals. Okay, I'll have to just leave it at that. Councillor Andrews, thank you. Councillor Andrews. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just summing up quickly, the, the sole reason that I moved this recommendation is that I can't escape the fact that we supported this parcel of land back in June in regard to the local housing strategy. I don't know how we can virtually retrack on our thinking there and the decisions that were made in June. Thank you. Okay, so we have the recommendation as moved by uh, Councillor Andrews and McLaughlin. So I ask those all in favour of the recommendation to raise their card in the planning matter. Councillors Turl and Nelson, Andrews, McLaughlin and Gare, those against. Councillors Scandra and House and Nipper, I declare the motion carried. We now move on to page 12.3, compliance update, page 82 to July and September. 12.2, oh, I'm sorry, councillors. Uh, exhibition of draft development control plan amendments before signage. Uh, do I have a mover, please? Councillor yep. Turlin's moving. And seconded by Councillor. Do I have a councillor to say? Councillor Nelson. Thank you. Uh, councillor Turlin, do, does anybody want an introduction? We debated this pretty well when it went out on that. Right. Put the motion. Okay. Let the motion be put. All in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Now we move to 12.3, compliance update, July to September. Somebody move it, please. Nelson and Councillor Nelson and Sterlin. Is there any discussion to it? Then again, it should be considered in place. I put it. All in favour? Against Kate. We move over to 13.1, page 83, legal report. Somebody like to move Nelson, Councillor Nelson and Turland again. Any discussion? And I put it all in favour against Carrie. Move over to 16.1, Minutes of the Audit Risk and Improvement Advisory Committee, page 87. Move happy, to move. happy to move that way. Move Councillor Nelson, seconded Councillor... Uh, you'll have to do it, Mr. Mayor. There is, I was the only councillor there. Well, councillors, councillor Turland is assuming what you've said is correct and proper, councillor Nelson. Is there any yeah. question, well, Somebody has to. <laughs> Thank you. Put it all in favour. Carrie, unanimously. We now move over to page one one. 3, 16, yeah, 103, yeah, page 103, Minutes of the Environment, New Council Ripper, Sustainability Committee and Second Councillor Nelson, is a question, Councillor Nelson. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, yeah, I've had discussions with Councillor Whipper. Look, uh, uh, I was looking to see in uh, ES31 
2020, which is the Environment and Climate Change Strategy update, which is uh, 2021 to 2031. Uh, if there's uh, any interest from councillors to have an information session on that uh, item, uh, which is dealing with uh, the Windjikarabi Environment and Climate Change Strategy 2021 to 2031, uh, there was a, a presentation given by staff. If there was interest from the councillors, uh, we could add to that, but, and that an information session be held for councillors in relation to this matter. If not, I'd be happy to sit down with the staff member and get my own information, uh, have my own information session with him. Okay. Uh, so uh, what what uh, number, <coughs> item number are you referring to, councillor? On, on page 103, uh, on the uh, uh, ES 31 stroke 20 says it's a Councillor uh, Nelson, I think the general manager would, uh, acting general manager, would also like to comment, comment on the 5.2 underneath as well. Yeah, well, councillors, um, item 5.2. Yeah, you've got your councillor whip up. Um, with the greatest respect to the committee and the recommendation, uh, it's not something, it's just, it's it's not the committee's role to be involved in the communications and cooperation between council departments. That's a matter for the general manager or the acting general manager in this case to, to deal with if there are any concerns there. Um, I'd be happy to talk to the chair of that committee and perhaps a little bit more about what that concern is, but that's a matter for me to manage if there are indeed any issues. So there won't be any council staff coming to a council committee to explain what the miscommunication or potential miscommunications are between staff. Uh, Councillor Whipper. Uh... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I don't see 5.1 initially. I don't see any problem with an update. What you would know, and um, our acting GM would know as well, is that we're in the process of selecting the panel to be appointed as the climate change panel. Um, so we're very close to that, and I'd be hoping that um, that we would be um, allowing that panel to meet at least once before the end of the year, um, so we could start the ball rolling. Um, the other thing, just in relation to the comment by the acting GM, I find that a little bit disturbing, actually, uh, that we wouldn't um, have the capacity, given that there is a councillor who actually chairs that environment committee, and there is um, certainly um, concern around the lack of input from our in environment sustainability branch in terms of approving um, some developments. I flagged for, um, as an example, Frencham. Um, we had a consultant making some outrageous um, comments in relation to the fact that there was no need to refer that through to the federal government under the EPBC Act. That's a concern. What concerned me in that process is there was no interaction with our environment and sustainability staff at all. So what we were asking simply was to have somebody from planning and environment to come along to that committee um, and to assure us that there was opportunity. Now, I'm happy to move a motion in the future in relation to that. Hang on, hang on, we're still in questions. We're, we're sort of entering into the area of debate. We certainly are, so I'll, I'll retract that and I'll have another go when we're in debate. Okay, so I wonder, well, can I ask the GM, AGM to respond then, Councillor Turl? Councillor Weber, what I'm saying is that if there are concerns about um, communication between various divisions of, of the council uh, operational uh, business, then that's a matter that should come to me. And I can look into that and undertake my own investigation about whether there are appropriate communication between the various divisions in relation to planning matters, etc. cetera. Um, that's a matter for the general manager. It's not a matter for, a, for with the greatest respect, council laws or a committee. Well, Councillor Whipper, would, should, would a way forward on this one be that you meet with the uh, AGM to work out a protocol that you would be comfortable with so the 
committee can hear um, the comments from staff? Look, I'm happy to do that, but my concern is that there's this dysfunction between departments of council. Right. This is a critical factor. And I, I look, I, I'm happy to leave it to the debate um, because I've got a lot to say on this. So okay, if we... And I'm not wanting to get into the debate, I respect that. But what I'm trying to say to you is, this is the first that I've heard of this issue, is, is this motion. Um, I would like the opportunity to have a chat with you as the chair to understand a little bit more detail about what your concerns are. And let me have the opportunity to look into that and determine whether there's action that needs to be taken as the acting general manager to ensure that those concerns are addressed. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Turl and then Councillor McLaughlin. Yeah, look, uh, may I suggest, if somebody can uh, explain to me, that the Heritage Committee has the same voice in relation to developments. Should the Environmental Sustainability Committee have the same terms of reference as the Heritage Committee for at least an opportunity to view what's coming forward? Uh, well, I don't know it's whether... Council, it's outside its terms of reference. That's what I'm saying. Would we change the terms of reference to... I think that's a matter of the councillors. Yeah, you... Okay, are... Mr Councillor Whipper, that's where we go. Okay, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, um, uh, look I, I think it's a very sound suggestion that we have an information session. Um, as Councillor Nelson suggested, um, and maybe these things could be sorted out at that level so we all know where we stand. Okay, so uh, we, have a, we have the minutes before us. There is a bit of um, feeling that perhaps a bit more uh, liaison between the chair and uh, senior staff take place before uh, the especially 32, uh, 5.2 is is carried. So what do you, would you be amenable to have that 5.2 out, Councillor Weaver, and meet with senior staff? Well, if we could maybe just put an addendum to 5.2 uh, before a report comes back to the Environment and Sustainability Committee, that the chair meet with the acting general manager. Uh, yeah, well, look, look Councillor Whitman, I want to work with you, I don't want to work against you, but, but I'm, again, I'm saying this is the first time that I've been made aware that the Environment Sustainability Committee has an issue with the communication between various divisions of this organisation. With the greatest respect, I wouldn't like the opportunity to be aware of that and have the opportunity to try and address that before something like this was passed. So yeah. I, thought, I thought the amendment that I suggested um, would have achieved that. Well, if, if you're going to put an alternative motion up, it's not be accepted as part of the recommendations. And that the recommendation is that the Chair of the Environment Sustainability Committee meet with the relevant senior staff to discuss these issues. Very happy with that. Before, before reporting back to the Environment and Sustainability Committee. Well, I'm happy to bring a report back to the Environment Sustainability Committee, yes, once I've had the opportunity to look at the issues and understand what action I need to take as the Acting General Manager. That's what, that's what I've been saying and suggesting. So that's my amendment. Okay. And, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get that worded up, Councillor Whipper. Okay. Would there be a suggestion just adding it to the motion as point two? We could do that. Yeah. We've got council whip up as the fall. Point two. Well, yeah. So yes, it is councillor uh Whipper, Mr. Pepping is going to work with Michelle Richardson, the minute take and put up a suggestion. So just we'll all just have a uh, a two second break while that's been done. Unless Are you happy with that, Councillor Whipper? Let's, do. Let's see what they say. I mean, geez, it's not rocket science. All I'm suggesting is that we amend it so that I have a meeting with the general manager, acting general manager, before it comes back to the environment committee. I mean, it's, it's not, not, not too difficult. Too. <laughs> I think there's no argument with it, but it's got to be down in black and white, so sure. everybody's happy with it. 
Mr. Mayor, what about Councillor Nelson's oh. suggestion? Yeah, yeah, just hold off. Okay. Uh, Here you go. Does anybody have another question in relation to this item? Right. Then we'll just hold fire for a minute. Have you got how it be sorted out? Will you accept that, Yeah, but I'd like after that, uh, after Branch, after the final sentence, uh, before coming back to the environment, and so that before a report comes back to the Environment Sustainability Committee. Okay. I don't think staff have any... No, I don't appreciate that, Councillor. All right. Good. Bit of a compromise. Then uh, if there is no other questions to the minutes, I'll put it all in favour. Right, right, woo, woo, woo. Who, who wants it? Sorry. Sorry, now now we can go back to Councillor yeah, Wilson. Five point yeah. Uh, Mr Mayor, if I've got the floor, I, I'm happy yes, to say... Yes, the floor, Councillor. Uh, look, if, if uh, the General Manager's happy to take that on board, if there's general agreement that we have an information session <laughs> on that, there's no need to change the recommendation. Okay, you would probably one Yeah. No problems. Do you want okay. to have there to make it official that a information session be held in relation to this item? Well, well you could make that a number three if you w wish, Mr Mayor. No, it just goes as, as part of 5.1 and that an information session be held in relation to this item. Well, no, I'll put it as number three. They're right. Like, exactly. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Now, is there any other debate? Then I'll put the recommendation all in favour. Carried unanimously. We move, now move to questions with notice. 116 from Councillor Whippet in relation to the environment levy. Now, the response has been there. So, yeah. Councillor Whippet, you've asked the question. Is I there, can I have a mover and seconder or a mover of a recommendation? Could I have a question, please? No, I want, I want the motion, uh, uh, a motion moved before I go into questions. Uh, I'll, okay. Councillor Whipper is moving the recommendation that it be noted, seconded by Councillor Scandrick. Councillor Whipper, uh, I'll give you the floor. Thank you. Um, look, I do note um, the, the response, and it's quite a detailed response, and I do thank staff for providing that. Um, I do note as well that we're still waiting for a response from the OLG. And, um, and that it will be coming after that response, that it will be coming back, I, I do imagine, to the, um, the Finance Committee for consideration. Um, but I'd just like to say there is still considerable concern out there in the community um, in relation to what they perceive to be um, um, a grab on the environment levy. Now, no matter how you look at it, there is a feeling in the community that um, the approval from IPART was for a set 3.5% and that um, with the current, under the current conditions, we're looking at possibly a 2.8, 2.6% as opposed to 3.5%. Uh, 3 the concern is that based on that rate itself, um, we're losing money that should be invested back into the environment. Now, I think in principle, I, I would have to agree um, with, uh, with that sentiment because obviously um, if the more money we invest into the environment, the better it is for the environment. 
So um, I empathise with those concerns expressed by the community. And I know we will get a further opportunity to debate this in more detail at the Finance Committee. Uh, but just to flag that um, I think some of the, uh, the issues that have been raised do have merit. And um, obviously fighting hard for this environment levy in perpetuity. There was, I believe, um, a belief that um, the 3.5 was the um, per in perpetuity um, amount that was agreed to by IPART. So, um, so I'll leave it at that at this stage and look for the forward to the opportunity in the future to debate this in more detail. Thank you, Councillor. But now, before it's Councillor Kim has got the got the card, then Councillor Nelson, then Councillor McLaughlin. So I'll be Councillor Kim, Nelson, and McLaughlin. Now, the staff have given a detailed response, and I think Mr. Mooney would. We we aren't in actual uh, debating an issue because it is to be moved that it be received and noted. So there's nothing controversial in it. But I think Mr. Murphy would like to clarify, or Mr. Paulie first, a, um, a couple of points. Well, look, again, councillors, I'll, I'll try and choose my words carefully, but um, I am very, very confident that we have complied with IPART's approval for the environment levy. And I'm very, very confident that that will be shown to be the case when the OLG finishes any review. Councillors, my frank advice to you, and, and I guess my frank advice to the members of the community, is that they don't understand how rate pegging works. Rate pegging is a science that, with great respect, is understood by very few people. We talk about percentages, but rate pegging, whilst a percentage is the headline number that's approved by IPART, it's not the critical number. Critical number when uh, special rate variations are approved is the national rate or the general national rate cap that's approved by council. In other words, the maximum amount of dollars that the council can raise. That's the critical number. And special rate variations are based on that, even though the headline number has to be a percentage. Um, so, what I'm saying to you is that it has been no, um, how can I put it? Um, moving of money away from the environment levy, intentionally or otherwise, um, and I'm very confident that will come to pass. And frankly, the bottom line is if, if Council wants to move back to a 3.5% percentage of its rates, another special rate variation would have to be put to my part and have to be approved by ICA. There is no other way forward. Now, at the end of the day, I guess we have to wait for that advice from the RLG, but as I said again, yeah, I'm very confident that we'll be shown to have complied with I pass approval. I respect the fact that there is concern out in the community. Um, but again, my comment is they don't understand the basic premise of how rates are calculated and the national general rate is calculated, and that's just a fact of life. Okay, I will ask Councillor Scan, then Nelson, and then Councillor Now, uh, Mr. Burney, I'll let Councillor Scandrick ask his question or will make comment, and then I'll give it to Mr. Mooney. Councillor Scandrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is, is there any reason why we couldn't establish a separate reserve and put these funds in there and run the accounts from there so it can be monitored on a basis. And of yeah. course, I would be suggesting to you, Council Whipper, that uh, this could be item two uh, on your on the, uh, the motion. Okay, I'll ask Mr. Mooney now to answer that. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, Councillors, at the next meeting um, of Council, you'll um, receive a copy of the Auditor General Purpose Financial Reports. Um, you'll also hear from Mr. Michael Kazu, um, Council's Auditor from the New South Wales Audit Office. Contained, contained within Council's General Purchase Financial Reports is a statement of cash reserves. The environment levy since its inception in 2000 has been held as an externally, um, cash, externally held cash reserve. Um, Councillors, so I can absolutely confirm to you that income when received or as levied is restricted to that reserve. 
and um, as it is spent, it is drawn down from that reserve. Um, in addition to it being within Council General Purpose Financial Reports that you'll receive at the next um, Ordinary Council meeting, the, the environment levy is also reported on a quarterly basis as part of the quarterly budget review statement um, that Council is required to receive and adopt within eight weeks at the end of each quarter. So, councillors, from my perspective as the Chief Financial Officer, um, I am entirely satisfied that we meet all of our legislative requirements in terms of reporting um, the cash reserves of the environment levy. Thank you, Mr Mooney. Um, I can only echo Councillor Whipper's comments. That is considerable, considerable community concern out there about what they think uh, versus, as you say, yes, it's all, all there and so on. But I, I do think we need to work on transparency on this. Uh, one way of, of doing that might be to revisit the discussion. So, and I hear what uh, Mr. Paul's saying, that this might require a reapplication. I'm curious about that. Thank you. No, I need to clarify, uh, Council, that's uh, not what I said. You've put in words in my mouth again, Councillor. What I have said is for you to achieve the 3.5% that you're indicating the community is in community and expecting, that is not what is currently approved. You would need to go back to IPART and seek a further variation to increase the special variation to 3.5%. It is so very confusing, Mr. Bear in the confusion. Thank you. Okay, there is confusion, and as Mr. Paul had said, and I have, will say again, the two most difficult things to understand in local government is planning and finance. The, the finances of council are so different to private enterprise. The way that the uh, the way that the, the books are and the percentages and everything else that comes to Councillor Nelson and then Councillor uh, uh, Are we in debate, Mr. Well, no, we're not debating because there's, it, the debate is a question being received and noted. No, I've, I've got a bit to say about this, Mr. Mayor. You have the right to speak, then Councillor uh, Halstead, and then if there's no other comment, then back to Councillor Whipper for uh, his comment. It's not well, at your well, debate. Well, Mr. 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 Mayor, if I can the floor, I'd have to say, after speaking to staff, understanding that we we're waiting on independent advice from the Office of Local Government uh, in regard to this environment the debate, I was a bit surprised to see the question on how to re-establish the environmental levy rate um, from to 3.5, as approved by IPART, or supposedly approved by IPART. Firstly, Mr Mayor, I don't believe there is considerable public concern out there in the community. Secondly, the question is asking how to increase council rates for the environment levy from 2.9 to 3.5, which in effect is a rate increase. And IPART didn't approve an increase in the rate levy to 3.5, because if they did, Mr. Mayor, council staff would have implemented such a rate increase. It's unfortunate that it's got to this position and we have to debate it. I'm surprised that people will not accept the evidence presented to them by the staff. But let's work through it, Mr. Mayor, in a proper manner without, without the finger pointing, and let's get the independent advice from the Office of Local Government and we can move on from there. But airing our dirty laundry in public, members of the public or members of the Environment Committee writing letters to the press, putting your proposition out there in the public is not doing anybody any good because the only, the only people that will upset are the passionate um, people about the environment and the excellent work that the um, environment uh, uh, the uh, staff are doing and the Environment Committee is doing. And, and look, I looked up my rate, rate uh, notice the other day. I'm paying 34.86 to the environment levy and I'm more than happy to do that. But there are many, many people in the residents in the Shire that pay over $1,000 in rates to the environment levy. Increasing rates to the environment levy at this time after our drought, our floods, 
a pandemic is not the way to go. And people are suffering out there. And, and this is what this proposition is saying. I know the recommendation before council is to note, but the question or the proposition being put is how to get the environment levy rate to 3.5. And the only way to do that is in a rate increase. I believe that the staff are right. Those residents complaining are wrong and the current environment rate levy of 2.9 applied is correct. So councillors, by all means, note the report, note the recommendation, but let's all take a chill pill. Maybe I should take one, Mr Mayor, and let's wait for the independent advice from the Office of Local Government. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. The only thing I disagree with is there's no dirty laundry. It's all clean laundry because there's nothing being done wrong. Councillor McLaughlin. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What, what can I say? Well said, Councillor uh, Nelson. Um, my question to um, to the Acting General Manager was answered. Basically, uh, how do we get it back to 3.5%? And that's go to IPART um, again. And that, as he said, means that we've got to go for a rate rise. So we'd have to let the community know that we're going to sting them for, for some more money um, and we've already had it. We've already had that in perpetuity, which a lot of councils would be very envious of us having what we have without, without us trying to, um, you know, nitpick about this amount of money. It's been explained. Some people won't accept that explanation. Um, and I think that those people, once the OLG comes back and explains that what staff have done is correct, with regard to the rates and a rate, a rate indexation, um, but they probably still won't accept it. But those people, if they wanted to pay 3.5%, well, let them pay it. But as Councillor Nelson said, there are people that are struggling with rates that do pay a lot of money, and to hit them with higher rates, I think, at this time, would not be uh, a politically uh, um, <laughs> sensible thing to do. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin and Councillor Halsey. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, I agree with what's been put up, with it being noted, and I'm certainly hoping that we get an independent opinion from OLG because certainly we we uh, deserve that. Uh, but is there widespread <clears throat> uh, concern uh, in the community? I'm not sure it's that, but there's certainly widespread concern amongst those that uh, support very strongly the environmental levy. And I don't know what percentage of people that is, but what it's about is ensuring that they actually understand. Now, I'm not, I'm not too sure I'd go so far as to, to say what Barry Paul said, which I thought was quite provocative, but I don't know what he intended to be that way, but uh, and he might be right. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the whole bit to do with finance. But can I just say this much to you, that most people out there in this show are struggling with respect to the rates. So I'm sure they don't want any impost of any greater amount. Thank you, and before I go to you, Councillor Whipper, we are, I've just asked Mr Mooney on the side whether there would be maybe a chance, because we're going to have our auditors here giving a report in two weeks' time, and um, I'm going to check up to make sure, and they are independent, and over the last 20 years, there has never been a question in relation to the way council has raised or conducted the expenditure of the environmental levy. And that's to Councillor Whipper's credit, one of his lasting legacies to this council. So um, I would hate to think that anybody in the community uh, believes that we are inappropriately not charging enough or divesting or diverting money to other projects that it shouldn't be done. And I would be one who would be very much upset with staff if that happened, but I don't have that belief one iota. Uh, Councillor Whipple. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, look, there is, I, <laughs> there still is a lot of concern out there in the community. Um, and there is a belief that 
when IPAR approved this for in perpetuity, um, that the direction from IPAR was that council was to reduce its general income to what it would have been without the, um, the environment levy, which at the time was 3.5%. So I think it's a valid point of um, uh, concern. I still do. And if uh, I'm happy to send in correspondence and get our auditors to look at that. That might be a, a wise thing to do, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we can put that question to our auditors and have them speak to that at the meeting. I think that would um, maybe clarify or give some sort of justification to the processes that people in our community don't understand around um, local government accounting. Uh, accounting, uh, as we all know, is a bit of a magic trick. Uh, there you see it, there you don't. We know that. Um, and local government, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what I'm saying is there is a perception in the community and councillors, we are ruled by perception. Our perceptions become realities over time. And I think that's something we need to take very, very seriously. Um, so, uh, so councillors will note this today. I'm happy to send that correspondence through to the mayor and ask our auditors to look at those concerns and uh, speak to those concerns as well. That might be the way out of this um, to to appease everybody. Thank you, Councillor Whipper. I will take that on notice and uh, to see whether that can be done, uh, and hopefully that would will alleviate it, but we'll, I don't know whether it can be done, but we will chase that through, okay? I'll give you that undertaking. That's good, Mr. Mayor. It's a natural justice, as I see it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Whipper. We have a recommendation as moved that it be received. The noted moved by Councillor Whipper and seconded by, and I can't see, Councillor Scandard, all in favour. That is carried unanimously. We now move over to 18.1. Uh, notice of motion, invitation to speak to Council briefing session regarding latest innovations in nuclear power. Councillor Andrews, would uh, do you have a seconder? You do. You have Councillor McLaughlin seconding. Councillor Andrews. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the intention of this notice of motion is to invite Mr Robert Parker to a briefing session with the intention of presenting the latest innovations in nuclear power as an option for Australia's future energy needs. Mr Parker, as a Master of Nuclear Science from the Australian National University, obtained in 2014, he has a Master of Engineering Science from the Uni of New South Wales and also a Bachelor of Civil Engineering from the Uni University of New South Wales. He is a Vice President of the Australian Nuclear Association and prior to that he has been President for four years. Rob is an avid supporter of nuclear to provide clean energy. He has travelled many times overseas in pursuit of knowledge and up-to-date information on this subject. He has been involved in the development of the public and community information programs in the nuclear energy, radiation, reactor safety and uranium resource, uranium resource development. He is involved in the Nuclear for Climate Australia project, which actively promotes the use of nuclear energy to address climate change. Rob attended the 2019 um, Congress on Advances in Nuclear Power Plants at Yuan La Pins in France. He also attended the Conference on Small Modular Reactors in Washington, USA in 2013. In participation with the Korea Australian Nuclear Cooperation Program, Rob attended the conference with the South Korean nuclear industry in 2018, which included a study tour of nuclear power plants, fuel and waste facilities, and industrial manufacturing plants. In May 2017, he visited a number of regions in the Fukushima, Fukushima province in Japan that had been contaminated by the meltdown of three reactors in 2011. He tells an intriguing story of this experience. Councils, I ask you to support this notice of motion as the presentation would just demonstrate a possible clean energy option at some time in the future. We may all have diverse views on nuclear. I'm confident, councillors, that you will find Mr. Parker, Parker's talk, fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we have Councillor 
Uh, McLaughlin is to, wants to speak. Uh, we have Councillor Scandrick, Whippa, Nelson. Uh, so I'll go in against, against, is there any speaker against having a presentation? Councillor Whippa, then you, back to you, Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, look, on principle, I, I oppose this. I mean, I, I'm a bit surprised that Councillor McLaughlin would support it. Uh, I remember the good old days in the Labor Party where this was a dirty word, nuclear power. So for, to, to see this supported by the Labor, uh, La, La, Labor Party councillor really surprises me um, because there's real concern out there in the community, Mr. Mayor. Again, this is, again, another classic example of giving in principle support, tacit support, to something that <laughs> I just think is totally unacceptable in our community. This is Australia. I mean, we've got a, a, a history of opposing this sort of danger. I mean, geez, uh, put your name to it, Councillor McLaughlin, and put it out there. But I'm not putting my name in any way, shape, or form to this because I'm totally opposed to it. Thank you. Well, we got that through loud and clear, Councillor Whipper. Councillor McLaughlin, and it is uh, a speaker against having a presentation. Uh, Councillor Whipper, you can speak. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I, look, I had to smile at that. What principle? We've got, you know. The principle is we've got to look for the best science. We, we, we moved as a council that we are in, in a climate emergency. And what? We're not going to listen to the best science because, you know, someone objected to it 20 years ago? How crazy is that? Now, Mr Parker, Mr Rob Parker, he's done presentations to federal governments. He's done one that I know about here um, to our federal government. Surely we as a local government can listen to uh, Mr. Parker and hear what he has to say. To, to turn our eyes off and say, Let, let's not listen to the best science because we should fear it because there's been some disasters. Well, there's also been massive disasters at all sorts of places and, all, <laughs> and not all associated with nuclear power. Uh, nuclear power, I believe, and I know um, that just recently we've heard Japan um, has gone away from nuclear power, but they've got no options. They have, they'd love to be able to be to using um, solar energy, but they haven't got the land to do it. So what are they doing? They're building 10 coal-fired power stations, and that won't be enough. So basically, if we're going to keep polluting the planet we're living on, Councillor Whipper, I would think we would have to look about looking at the best science and alternatives to keep pumping CO2 into the atmosphere and use coal for the next 100 years or the next 10. I think we've got 10 years to turn it around. Didn't we vote as a council that we would try and reduce CO2? How do we do that? How do we do that? I mean, I worked in the cement industry for many years that produces a massive amount of CO2. I've talked about there's good uses for, for cement, not necessarily always in footpaths. You know, I know you don't like wind power, but you know, some people would like to think we can do it all with wind and renewables. I'd like to think we could do that too. But let's give Mr. Parker the opportunity to hear what he has to say. Why would we turn our ears off just because we don't like it? Or in history, um, some political parties have been against it. Well, I'm very happy to listen to what Mr. Parker has to say because if the federal government can listen to him, I think we can in local government. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, for a minute, I thought this would be just a so-so meeting. Councillor Scandron and then Councillor Turley. Who else had the hand up before? Councillor Scandron, then Turley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I won't go over three minutes, but I wanted to just say that I think the community... Uh, Councillor Scandron, Councillor uh, McLaughlin didn't go over three minutes. I didn't say that, Mr Mayor. Well, um, you made the... <laughs> come on, let's come on, Councillor Scandron. Probably a minute gone now. But here we are, representatives of the community, and it's in our, I would thought, our uh, uh, right in front of us to be fully informed. So... I don't have a problem with having free speech, open and transparent. The only 
problem I have with this particular motion is that it's a closed councillor session as opposed to being part of a council meeting or before a council meeting where it could be um, broadcast through our webcast. I'm very happy to see, would be very happy to see that changed in the motion uh, to uh, say that it be part of a council meeting or prior to a council meeting as we have done for coal in the past and for no coal in the past and other matters, because I think this is worthy of being uh, seen by the community. So I ask the mover and seconder to consider uh, changing that so it is part of a uh, council open meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scandra. Councillor Turlin. <coughs> Uh, recommendation has no mover and second in front of me at the moment. Yes, it does. It has uh, Councillor Andrews moved yeah, and McLaughlin seconded. Well, it's just not on the sheet. It's not oh, here. Sorry. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, now, look, uh, it's it's very interesting. I'm very keen for the uh, the education on it. Doesn't mean I'm going to support it, but exactly. I think. I think education is number one for us all to understand. We're not making a decision that is going to be in our shire or anywhere in New South Wales. That's not the case. All it is is to be educated on what it is. I would also love to get some more presentation from solar and wind as well so we can understand that proposal. We know what coal does. We've got that set in stone. But I think wind and solar would be also a good education for all councillors. Uh, to be involved in down the path as well, if we could. Uh, we're not going to make this decision. It's a federal decision, if any. I don't think any federal government is going to be going to make any decisions in relation to this for years to come. They're pushing, uh, which is good, clean energy, and so they should. But um, I think by memory, Germany is actually removing all their nuclear plants at this point of time. They've made a decision over the next 20 years to remove all their nuclear plants. Maybe because they're old units, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, I'm happy to uh, listen to Mr. Rob Parker as an information. Doesn't mean I'm going to support it. Thank you, Councillor Turwin. Uh, Councillor Nelson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, I, I wasn't going to speak because you had a couple for and a couple against, but I do have to say that uh, Councillor Standards. Uh, motion of uh, having open debate. Uh, I don't believe that we've got to that level yet. Uh, the debate on coal was at a different level and uh, many a time uh, the councillors are the first ones to get a presentation from various people to get an understanding. We're, we're in a more informal environment and we can ask questions and the uh, person presenting can uh, provide open. Council is a much more formal uh, event for people presenting. Um, so, uh, I, I, and while I'm, I'm not a fan of nuclear power, I'm more a, a renewable type of guy, um, but uh, it definitely uh, is an issue of not in my backyard in Australia. Uh, and uh, I think we might talk about it until cows come home, but I'll be very surprised if uh, nuclear does happen in Australia. Councillor Turlin was right, Germany are getting out of nuclear, but uh, France uh, use it a, a fair bit, uh, a lot, quite a lot actually. Uh, I'd like to think that my mind's open to Mr Parker to see what he has to say, particularly that he's spoken to uh, uh, federal, federal government, so, uh, let, let's uh, let's uh, lock it in and see how we go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, Councillor Scandrick, you have spoken. I'm moving an amendment, Mr Mayor, and that is that uh, the, the motion as you see it there, but the uh, uh, words Councillor briefing session be removed and, uh, and it put into an open briefing session. I think that would cover it adequately. I don't see it as a debate, of course, um, Councillor Nelson. I just see it as something that we can webcast for the public. So I'm looking for a seconder on that. Uh, do Councillor Whipper is seconding that. Um, okay, 
Before, uh, if you wish to speak to it, but before you do, I'm going to speak to the motion. Uh, and I'll take the line that I will, I will support the recommendation for an education. To me, it is not open for uh, the public. It's a briefing session for councillors. As such, if councillors want to, if members of the public, and I know that there has been many public forums on um, uh, nuclear energy or any other energy in various forms, then I think they can um, make that avenue. But at this stage, it's just four councillors and that's it. And nothing's going to arise out of it unless councillors want to put it. So, look, by making it a uh, live stream, I won't be supporting it. I'll listen to it in the first instance. And with the comment that we are introducing an electric car uh, plant, hopefully, to the Shire. And remembering that there was a gentleman who drove around a Ford Packard for seven years and plugged his electric car into the... Um, into the PowerPoint each night, and it is, it's taken 50 years for that to really, uh, really now taking a, a hold. So I'm, I'll listen with an open mind and um, make a determination after that. So thank you, Councillor Andrews, for bringing it forward. Uh, now, any other speakers before I go back to Councillor Andrews? Councillor, uh, councillors, you will have to either speak. You will have to speak for the amendment, uh, and that's about it. So, did he get a second, of Mr. Mayor? Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. All right, right, on. okay. I'll be speaking against it then. Councillors, uh, Councillor Whipper, then Councillor Nelson. I'd yeah. like to speak, Mr. Mayor. You reckon? I haven't seen you, your card there, Councillor Scandrin. Well, I'm the mover of the amendment, Mr Mayor. I know you are, Councillor Scandrin. Then I will give you the right to speak to it first, and then Councillor Nelson, and then Councillor Whipper. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And incidentally, Councillors, somebody's still got their microphone on, because I'm getting a lot of feedback here. Councillor Andrews, I'm not sure if it might be something to do with yours. I'm not sure. No, that's better. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor, uh, look, I, I just believe the public would be very interested in this. Mr. Parker is a very uh, rec reputable speaker on this. Uh, I certainly have been uh, briefed by him in times past on this sort of matter, and he certainly has uh, world um, very wide re recognition. Um, the involvement of the public, I think, uh, is important on this, and you mentioned the electric vehicle thing as well. Uh, that, again, I think should be like the no coal and the pro coal and various other major issues. We've had those in the chamber. Uh, I see you shaking your head there, Councillor McLaughlin, but, you know, the electric vehicles plant on Lackey Road or Douglas Road as it will be is not going to have coal wagons trundling past it now, I don't think, on the spur line. I think... Uh, we will have the absolute uh, contrast. And it, that's only been some three or four years. Uh, the world is changing dramatically, is my point there, uh, Councillor. I noticed Japan, whilst they're commissioning new coal plants, has also set a, uh, a emissions-free uh, target at the same time. So uh, it's a changing world. I think we should involve the whole community in this. Why wouldn't we? Thank you, Councillor Scandron. Uh, Councillor Nelson and Councillor Whipper. I won't go over three minutes, Mr Mayor. Um, I don't know if Councillor Scandron heard me, but I don't believe that uh, we've got to this level. I think we need to hear Mr Parker first. Uh, that's what council, That's in council what we normally do. Uh, that coal issue, that uh, went on for a number of years before... Um, we got, we got to public speaking and uh, people coming speaking for and against. So, Mr Mayor, I'll be, I'll be voting against the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Whipper, thank you, Councillor Nelson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, uh, I'm speaking for the amendment because the only way I'll support this is if it's put out there into the public so that the public can have their say. I mean, 
things are, I'd be very surprised if Australia as a nation embraces nuclear energy. Nuclear waste is, is, is waste that's there forever, forever. It's, it's a real concern. So to even entertain this, the only way I'd even begin to is to include our residents in the shire because it's not going to happen. As Councillor Turlin said, this will be decided at a federal level. And I don't ever believe the feds or any government in power would be bold enough to reinvigorate uh, that community opposition in relation to nuclear power. It's just a, a pipe dream. So in principle, the only way I'd support this is in an amended form. Otherwise, I'll vote against it. Thank you, a lot, lot of feedback coming back there, Mr. Mayor, but anyway, I'll push on. Um, yeah, look, I won't be supporting this. I mean, this is not for the public to have their say. That's what Councillor Whipper just said. The public wants the public to have their say. This is an, this is an information session, an education uh, for us as councillors to hear what Mr. Parker presents. You know, it's not for the community to have their say. It's for us to have a listen to what he has to say as he's presented, as I said, to other, other groups. Um, he's presented to federal, uh, federal members, federal ministers that I know about. And he's also presented quite a few in our local community at the CWA in Barrel. I've been to at least two of them. It's not as if he's hiding this to the, from the public. He, he, he puts it out there. Anyone who wants to go along can hear him speak. And I've spoken to him recently, and he's going to do another one open to the public. So anyone can go along. So, you know, Councillor Whipper can go along with all his naysayers to go along, and they can then, you know, have their say. But this is for council. This is for councillors to hear about. Um, as as Councillor Andrews has put this up, it's an information session for councillors to ask questions and to find out you know, just what he has to say and listen with an open mind. We don't have to agree. We can just hear what he has to say. So I won't be supporting the amendment to the, the community. This is, as, as Councillor Nelson said, we're not there yet. This is about us hearing about this. And, and I think it's important that we hear it. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Andrews, your right of reply. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, um... I'm sure, well, I'd like to think that, you know, in Australia, we all support, or well, most of us, I hope, free speech. This is what it's about. You know, I too have an open mind. I'm not suggesting for a minute that I'm sure on what my feelings are towards nuclear. And I just want to really convince councillors that Mr. Park is not coming here to try and convince you of anything. If you know, Once you've heard him speak, you will find it rewarding. I mean, he's a, he's a terrific speaker. This is his area of expertise. He's not coming... When he, if he, this is approved, he he's not going to come here and try and convince council of anything. He'll just present his case as a believer in nuclear energy. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll put the amendment first, as moved by Council uh, Scandrick and seconded by Council Whipper. All in favour of the amendment, raise your no. In favour of the <coughs> amendment, uh, raise your card. Councillors Turlin, Scandrick, and Whipper. Those against the amendment, please raise your card. Uh, like uh, councillors Andrews, Nelson, McLaughlin, Alstead, and Gare, I declare the amendment lost. I'll now put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please raise your hand or card. Uh, councillor Turlin, Nelson, Andrews, McLaughlin, uh, and yeah, those against, councillors um, Whipper, Halstead and Scandrick, I declare the motion carried. We move on to 18.2, notice of motion 36-2020, meeting on Playhouse repairs. Uh, councillor Halstead, you have moved this recommendation. Do you have a second that? Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Like to speak. Yeah, I would like to speak. Uh, 
This is a matter of safety as far as I'm concerned. We would all be aware of the fact that some time ago, and I don't know who carried out this work and I don't want to speculate, but clearly structural damage was rendered to the building when some person or tradesman or whatever else uh, cut trusses in the roof to install an air conditioner. That's the background. But the, the problem is at the moment we've got a structure there that's being uh, um, temporarily strutted, if you like, or held up, allegedly held up, um, to ensure safety of people that, you know, will use the area. I'm just concerned to see that, one, the information we were given way back, and it's probably 12 months ago now, Mr. Mayor, I don't recall, we had a consultant, I think, uh, it was suggested anyway, as a consultant, civil engineer addressed us um, with, with some sketches and yeah. told us what the story was. And we've gone to this point uh, of doing major work. It must be costing us a fortune, even what's there now. But I'm just wondering whether what was uh, suggested or recommended or, if you like, uh, stated was actually a fact. I, I don't know, but I think the community needs to know because here we have already, we haven't got, uh, we've got people not using it. That's the normal uh, playhouse uh, occupants uh, at great uh, inconvenience, not using it because of the alleged problems. Now, I don't know whether they are as significant as was originally uh, pointed out, but I'd like to see something like this happen so that we can all be, um, if you like, brought up to speed uh, and given information as per those three uh, recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halstead. Uh, Councillor Nelson, are you speaking for or against? Uh, well, against, Mr Mayor, but I've got an amendment uh, that uh, oh, you would have I've thought about. Uh, thanks, Ken. Um, That's all right. Of course you would. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, and uh, I think I've sent it through... Uh, there. Okay. We will put up the, um, do we have the amendment? Oh, okay. oh, there it is, down the bottom. It's so we'll try and get it uh, increased. Yeah, it's uh, nothing too much to get excited okay. about. Because it's... Uh, do you have a second for your amendment? Councillor McLaughlin. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Nelson's moved the amendment. You can speak to Councillor Nelson. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, well, as you can see, it says that Council reaffirm its briefing session for the Mittagong Playhouse scheduled for mid-November and that such briefing session include an on-site inspection and further that the consulting structural engineer be present at the, at the subject site visit. Um, I'm doing away with having a report brought forward initially. Um, I, I think if we have the information session first, the facts can be presented. Uh, we can go on site. We can have the uh, uh, consulting structural engineer. I don't believe that we've, that uh, there's been a, 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 a another person uh, a, build, uh, a contracted build has been appointed yet, uh, which was in point three. And, uh, and, and I think that uh, we can, um, and, and that's uh, what we normally do, Mr. Mayor, is have those briefing sessions first uh, we, uh, and get, get the facts before we go into uh, getting reports about it. So I'll just leave it at that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Talbot. Just a point of clarification, if I may, for Councillor Nelson. Can council staff inform, was there a builder employed uh, to do some works required by council, which they engaged an engineer? Is that correct or not? Uh, Mr. Paul. Councillor Talbot, to answer your question, council engaged a builder and part of the builder's role was to then engage a structural engineer, but the limit of the brief for the builder was basically to strip the internal uh, linings and the ceiling, etc., and allow access for that structural engineer, then make an assessment on the building. So the builder has, part of their brief is not to make any recommendations in terms of any rectification work, etc. That's the structural engineer, and the builder is not engaged to do any of those structural uh, rectification works because we're yet to determine what they are. 
Yeah, no, I, I get that, but it was just to clarify that there was a builder which Councillor Nelson thought there wasn't engaged. There was a builder engaged to do that work. Not, not, I to think... make, not to make any advice on any future rectification works. That's not part of the builder's brief. No, I get that, but one would, would suggest that a builder would have an understanding of what he actually found during the process working with the engineer and what he found when he removed the ceiling and whatever else was there. So a builder... Anyway... I hear what you're saying, so it's just clarified the point. There is a builder in place and there is the engineer in place. Now, um, this was on the 6th of November last year at Council's briefing session at Craigie Burn Hotel. This is where it all started when we found that there was a problem on the site. We are nearly turning 12 months to the day of where we are getting to the point of finding out what's happening with the building. It is critical that we now have removed the ceiling uh, and the engineer has been engaged and there must be information that they can explain to us what might be the problem or what can be the rectification issue and then put a plan in place so that a budget can be put in place, an actual budget or a tender to, to rectify the work. Um, I think it's a matter of urgency. We shouldn't be delaying any longer. I think the motion put forward by Councillor Halstead is clear. I think if you want to ask questions to the builder uh, who's done the work on site and seen what he believes he has found in conjunction with the engineer, then you go with the motion and not the amendment. The amendment does not go far enough. I'd like to see a report prior to then. I imagine council has a report to date because council's in, endorsed uh, the builder to do the work uh, and, and engage the engineer to inform council of what has gone on there. So I can't see any problem with uh, a report that would be reproduced, it's already got already, and, uh, and engaging the engineer to be on site at the same time. So I'll be recommending the motion, not the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Turlin. Any other speakers? Then I'll just make a comment, and that is that uh, let's do, oh, Councillor Andrews. Do you wish to... Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be supporting the amendment. Um, the suggested briefing session in mid-November is what, three, maximum three weeks away. Surely to God we can leave it. I've got no problem with um, the amendment. I think it's a good idea that, the, that we have the briefing session and then follow that attend site with the engineer. Um, three weeks, that's all we need to wait. Thank you. Yeah, look, I, I happen to agree with you, Councillor Andrews. I think the um, to do a, a detailed report at this stage, um, before we have a look at it, it's got to be done hand in hand. And let's have a look at it, get it on site with the engineer um, and discuss it on a, you know, on a level playing field so we get a bit of direction. But to get a detailed report when we don't exactly know what what is yet to be done, um, I think it's a bit premature. So I'll be supporting the amendment. Councillor Halstead, you have the right of reply. Uh, you're, mute. you're on mute, Councillor Halstead. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you know, the recommendation I've moved is, is very genuine, trying to get at the whole issue of safety, and I'm not convinced that the original um, session we had is what was actually found. I mean, I've got no idea, but I'm just wanting to know that as someone that's dealt with structures over a period of years, that, you know, you need to be sure what you're doing or what you're going to do before you do it. And uh, to me, it's very straightforward. Uh, what, I've, what I've called for here is uh, let's get the facts. And, you know, whether there's going to be an information session or not, uh, this solves the same thing. I mean, let, let's find out what the second structural engineer has found now that they've actually opened it all up, because uh, I'd, I'd be interested. I'm very concerned to see that we get the facts before we spend any more money on it. And obviously, we've spent a lot already, and we should know what that is. Uh, I'm just wondering why people would be... Uh, convinced that uh, the public should not know what this story is all about, what, what the facts are, because simply at this point in time, I've had a number of people, not a lot, but a number of people say, what the hell is going on over there? And, uh, you know, in my view, it's all about public safety first. Thanks. 
Thank you, point Councillor Halsey. Um, all in favour of the uh, amendment, please raise your card. Councillors uh, Nelson, Andrews, McLaughlin and Gare, those against. Uh, Councillors Turl and Scandra and Halstead and Whipper, I'll be using my casting vote to vote in favour of the amendment. The amendment now becomes the motion. I put the motion. All in favour, please raise your card. Councillors Gare, uh, McLaughlin, Andrews and um, uh, Nelson and those against. Councillors Whipper, Halstead, Scandrick and Turwood. Thank you, councillors. We now move on to... Casting vote, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, I'll use the casting vote. The motion. Yes. The motion. Oh, for the motion, I'll use my casting vote in favour of the, uh, now the motion. Uh, declare it carried. Uh, 18.3, notice of motion 37.2020, removal of Station Street, Pin Oaks timeframe. Uh, Councillor uh, Scandrick, do you have a seconder? Councillor Turley. Yes, I do, Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, I've put this motion up because uh, a lot of people in the community are now asking about the timeframe for councils proposed removal of pin oaks and the interruption that may transpire. I mean, we've just gone through a very uh, noticeable increase in tourism traffic and uh, the concern is not only for businesses in um, Station Street and Barrel generally, but also the residents uh, about how those traffic arrangements will take place. Now, I'm just going to stop there, uh, Mr Mayor, because I note here that Mr. Paul's going to give us a briefing and then I'll speak after that if that's all right. Uh, yes, I'll allow you to speak after the verbal update, Mr. Paul. Uh, Councillors, in response to the two questions that have been raised, uh, in, re in regard to item one, my advice to Council is that uh, when the pin oaks are removed, the disruption to council to sorry the traffic in barrel will, will be minimal because it's proposed that that work will be done at night. So those trees will be removed. I can't give an exact time frame, but um, in the evening and by the next morning, those trees will be gone. So there will be some diversion of Station Street around into Winter Caribou Street and back around into Merrigan Street for a period of time. But it'll be in the evening, and when I say in the evening, it'll probably be late in the evening. And by the following day, all of that work will be complete. So any uh, disruption to traffic would be minimal. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. Um, so in my view, two weeks notice, that's a matter for council, I guess, but um, what I'm saying to you is the interruption to traffic will be very minimal. In relation to item two, the review of environmental Thank factors. You, Councillor Talbot. The review of environmental factors has not yet been signed off. Um, it's very close to being signed off, but it has not yet been signed off. In regard to the MOU, uh, the MOU is with Transport Asset Holdings New South Wales. They are the entity that needs to sign off in regard to that MOU. Uh, that MOU has been with them now for a number of weeks, probably a month. Um, I was assured that it wouldn't take too long, that it had actually been referred to the relevant person was going to be signed off. I will chase that up tomorrow to find out where that's up to. Okay, any questions in relation to the response by Mr. Paul, Councillor Turbin? Uh, there is already a motion that's been approved a few months ago that says exactly what number one is, that council will comply with the requirements of the, I believe it's the working in a road space uh, council might just chase that motion forward. I'll chase it myself. It says that they will give signage and public no notification yeah. to comply with the regulations of working in a roadway. That is already approved on the books. Well, I, well there is a bit of uh, uh, discord in relation to that statement, Councillor Turlin, but it will be followed through to make sure what you say is correct. Thank you.
Okay, Councillor Whipper. You're on mute, right. um, Yep, thank, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, I've no problem supporting this. Um, I think um, our community have built up um, certainly um, an opinion. There's those for, there's those against. But ne nevertheless, I think, you know, giving two weeks' notice, um, I, <laughs> I think I know what um, the two weeks' notice is for, but um, I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> Um, I travel along Station Street more and more these days and um, it's outrageous the amount of traffic build-up um, that, that's, uh, that's occurring on that route. So I still think that um, we've got to bite the bullet, but I don't think the community should be denied the opportunity of knowing when the work will go ahead and um, according to democracy um, have their right to um, express their views in relation to that either. So. Um, I'll, I'll support the um, the motion in this instance. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whipper. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Halstead. Uh, uh, if there is Councillor Nelson, do you wish to speak? Uh, are, we, are we in debate? We're in debate. I want somebody to speak for the record for the recommendation. I think Councillor. Uh, I'll be speaking against. Yeah. So, Councillor Nelson and Councillor Halsey. Well, well, just quickly, Mr Mayor. Uh, council has to follow rules and regulations and it will give appropriate advice to the residents of, of the area. And uh, I, I hear what Councillor uh, uh, Whipper said. And, of course, everyone should express their views in the appropriate, safe manner. Uh, it's good to see uh, that Councillor Scandrick recognises that the pin oaks at Station Street are to come down. After all, it is a council resolution uh, that staff have to follow. Uh, it's If only the state government could uh, move a little quicker, that would be very helpful. Um, but let's not forget, Mr Mayor, that when Station Street becomes roll gold, the state government or uh, uh, will or should the state government take over uh, Station Street and then Bong Bong Street can uh, be given back to the people of the Shire. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Halstead. Yes, thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, uh, my, my feeling on this is pretty straightforward. It hasn't changed. And uh, it's interesting to hear Councillor Nelson there talk about complying with the law. Well, that's what I'm on about. We, we need to be sure that what we're doing is right. I've indicated to a number of people I don't disagree with uh, the upgrade of Station Street. That's not the issue. But work cannot commence on Station Street upgrade until the requirements of the EPA Act have been complied with absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And let me tell you, a review of environmental factors must be prepared and presented to the elected council prior to a decision by it for an activity, which is what it is, to issue an activity consent, in other words, consent to what they're doing, which is an activity, to approve the proposed construction. Now, a determining authority cannot undertake an activity such as this one or any other one, but let's talk about this one at this moment under Part 5 of the Act before requiring the preparation of and consideration of a review of environmental factors to determine whether the subject activity significantly affects the environment. Now, it may well be that when that work is undertaken, that the consideration by the staff when they've looked at it uh, is that it doesn't significantly affect the environment. I'm not on about that issue. I'm just saying an REF cannot be avoided. And I think already Mr. Mr. Paul has indicated that it's in play. It's been in play for at least 12 months that I've heard of. So I'm wondering when it will actually get before the council. Under the provisions of the above mentioned legislation, the environmental impact statement, which is an entirely different thing, so that's for a much larger project, has to be put before the public. However, when it comes to uh, the issue of exhibiting an REF, the legislation is silent on that. So there is no requirement whatsoever for the REF to be publicly exhibited. And everybody should get that message loud and clear. So I'm not suggesting that happens, but I'm suggesting that the council has an absolute obligation legally to get an REF, so I'm thinking that's happening, and it's got to be put before the council before it makes its decision, because very clearly, 
a, a project of that size would not ever be given delegated authority to the staff to make a decision on that. Different with some of the smaller uh, projects, but there's no way known this council has, or would it, I would think, give delegated authority to the staff to approve of, issue a consent, for example, it was a development, in this case it's an activity, so an activity consent, the consent for this work to be handed out by the council, oh, sorry, by the staff, which would be preposterous. What I want about is process, and that is the REF you're talking about, or has been referred to, must come before the council. You must then make a consideration based upon what the staff has said about it, and then you go forward from that. Until you do that, you have not complied with the legislation. Now, in that respect, uh, clearly, um, you know, opinions of others need to be sought. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe that um, yeah, th that opinion or those opinions will come from uh, elected uh, ministers of this state. I don't know, but uh, I've you, certainly got my mind on it. Your time has expired. I'm sure it has, and that's about where I finish. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Well, due process is not followed in relation to these trees. And as I said, the motion has already been on books, which says the council will comply with working in a road space. That's already on and approved, but you, council, will chase that through, I hope. If not, I will find it. This process has broken down because of the 25th of March when we had this extraordinary meeting that says we're going to pull down eight trees. And today, still, Council has not communicated with the public as required by Infrastructure New South Wales and Transport New South Wales. Both of them said on every occasion that the REF and the removal of any changes, any major changes, which is major changes taking eight trees from two down and also building a car park in Midiwong, which was never part of the so-called Station Street uh, proposal. Those were major changes. They've never been advertised in a proper form to the community. Council staff, council laws, you need to be put on notice that if you undertake this work without the proper process, Council, the community will take the council on. You have not provided a proper process through community consultation, a major project that only goes 920 metres long. And only two weeks ago, I bought the issue up about the second bridge over Windsor Caribbean Street. Even though I've had a bit more information today, I'm still not convinced that if the Sydney Trains or the ARTC make council puts a second bridge at 7.1 to 7.5 metres higher than the rail, that second bridge cannot be installed. And if you read the weekly circular 36, it says in 2012 that the second bridge over Windsor Caribbean Street will be the intricate link for Station Street. So if it cannot be built, and it's not been determined yet, the whole Station Street project information and process is flawed. So be aware, if council starts to remove these trees at night without proper due process and the REF, there will be held to play by the public. You are on notice now. Thank you, Councillor Turwin. Um, okay, before I go back to Councillor Scandrick to make his right of reply, um, Council will follow due process. Simple as that. Whatever Council is required to do, Council will do. And that is an assurance that I will give all Councillors. I am not going to be a mayor that will give unauthorised uh, support to a project that does not comply with all conditions that are required by law. And that includes removal of trees, structures around, due notice, um, due notice of closure of roads, REF uh, comments and information that has to be put before council. But we know councillors, since a report by the engineer of Windsor Caribbean back in the 80s, 
This is the only alternative to a better traffic flow through Barra. And the roundabout and the removal of these trees is the only alternative that was accepted by Transport New South Wales. There is no other option. And yet we still get this comment, we're not, we're not consulting the community. There is no consultation that can be done other than what has been a given and adhered to by Transport New South Wales. It will, we will have to comply and we have complied. So I won't be supporting this uh, recommendation because council will comply. I don't think we have to put it in writing that, you know, perhaps we should, perhaps we shouldn't. Well, sorry, I'll give the undertaking to uh, the community that council will comply. So, your right of reply, Councillor Scandra. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and I note your undertaking. But of course, Councillor Turland is quite precise. The project is vastly different to what it was proposed in September 2017 at a public meeting in St Jude's Hall. In fact, at that meeting, I think the uh, best comment from the community, and there was just a lineup, non-stop of concerns about this, was that this was a solution uh, looking for a problem. How well that was said. But uh, ever since then, it has morphed into something completely different. And of course, the original grant was, uh, captured on the basis that it was called the barrel bypass and involved a bypass with approaches. And we're now building the approach, but not the actual bypass. I think the community is completely frustrated about that. Uh, the fact that we're back to front. And I certainly still say that we should be building uh, part two, the uh, bypass from uh, Barrel Street out to Lynx Road. Now we have all the land, bar a little slither, and that uh, owner is aware of this, uh, we could do that. Uh, we own the land. Where this one is just contentious. The build program on this will take, in my view, a couple of years. So this is only the beginning of the disruption. So we've got to have a very clear statement about how we're going to manage this. And that's why the community would, uh, I think, appreciate knowing two weeks in advance what our proposal is. Now, only yesterday I wrote to all councillors about a traffic issue in Kirkham Road that has arisen. And uh, I pointed out that the staff had originally thought that that might be the case. And sure enough, the turn right uh, onto Windsor Caribbean Bridge uh, is being um, uh, causing some traffic flow uh, interruption with cars parked on the curb. These are the sort of things that community uh, are worried about and do want to import. So, councillors, I think in uh, interest of transparency and everything, this is not unreasonable to say we will be completely open and transparent and we will give two weeks notice to all businesses and residents of this work. Thank you, Councillor Scandron. So, I will, uh, there's no amendment, so I will put the motion as moved by Councillor Scandron and seconded by Councillor Turlin. All in favour of the recommendation, please raise your card. Councillors Whitmer, Halstead, Scandrit and Turlin. Those against? Councillors McLaughlin, Andrews, uh, Nelson and Gare. Seeing that it is a four-tied vote, I will use my casting vote to defeat the recommendation. Um, and declare the motion lost. Mr. Um, Mayor, you had your green card up voting for it. Oh, I, oh well, I'm voting against it. There you go. I'll call it again, councillors. I think mine showed a cross. But anyway. It didn't before. Okay, then I'm putting it again, Councillor Turbin. All those in favour of the recommendation moved by councillors Scandrit and uh, Whipper, uh, Turlin, Councillors Turlin, Scandrit, Halstead and Whipper. Those against, Councillor Gare, McLaughlin, Andrews and Nelson using the casting vote to defeat the, uh, the recommendation or the motion. 
I declare the motion uh, the motion defeated. Uh, we now looking for a recommendation to move into closed. Move Councillor Andrews and Nelson. All in favour? Those against? Carried. Been on live stream seeing these recorded meetings. We are now going into close and we'll come back out in close, I would think, in a very short space of time. Um, it may be 10 minutes or so. Uh, thank you very much for watching this riveting live webcast, uh, Facebook live stream, and we now move into. Okay, we are now back on to open and I'll ask the general manager to read out the recommendations that were passing closed. This man there are two matters that were dealt with in the closed committee. The first item being 19.1, compliance actions, notices of orders, update July, September 2020. The resolution of the council was that council received a note of compliance actions, notices and orders, orders report for July to September 2020. The second matter that was dealt with in closed committee was the legal report. Council resolved that the information in the legal report be noted. Thank you, councillors. And may I say this is probably the best meeting that we have had for quite a while. So I appreciate your cooperation. Thank you for your debating. And um, I declare the meeting closed and we will see you um, next week.